Hi everyone, my dissertation is now in the archive and I'm excited to share it with you. But before you start reading, I thought it would be helpful if I give a little bit of background and context for the mathematics. And I wanna start by explaining my title. In short, my thesis begins with a desire to understand mathematical structure that is both algebraic and statistical. I wanna explain what this means. By algebra, I just mean the basic sense in which things come together to form something new. In an algebra, you can multiply vectors to get a new vector. Another word I have in mind for this is compositionality, where small things compose to build a larger construction and where knowledge of this larger construction comes through understanding the individual parts together with the rules for combining them. But here's a question. What if those rules are statistical? What if the rules for multiplying vectors in your algebra are mediated by probability? Now we are at the interface of algebra and statistics, and so you wonder, what kind of mathematical structure is this? To investigate, the natural thing to do is to look for an example. Amazingly, we do not have to look far. It's right in front of you, carefully knitting together each word on this screen. In other words, language exhibits mathematical structure that is both algebraic and statistical. Language is algebraic since words come together to form larger expressions. Orange is a word, fruit is a word, and I can concatenate them to get orange fruit. But language is also statistical since some expressions occur more frequently than others. Orange fruit occurs more frequently than orange idea, and that contributes something to the meanings of these expressions. And the probability of someone saying, I have an orange fruit, is much higher than saying, I have an orange idea. Okay, but what is this mathematical structure? To try to understand it, we look for an initial set of mathematical tools to start exploring. Now to find this toolbox, it's good to look for another example where compositionality and statistics meet. And again, we do not have to look far. The world of quantum mini body physics involves precisely these ideas. Small systems composed to form larger composite systems and various properties of these quantum systems are driven by statistics. And so that is where we pick up. My thesis uses basic tools in quantum physics to investigate algebraic and statistical mathematical structure. Okay, before going on, let me say I have written my dissertation with a wide audience in mind, and there is a low entrance fee for following the mathematics. The main prerequisites are linear algebra and basic probability theory, and I suspect you already have these in your toolbox. So on that note, let me now say something about the content of the paper itself. It's about 130 pages long, which I realize is a little daunting to read. So let me suggest what I think is the quickest way to get a good feel for what's inside. I recommend jumping right away into section 2.1, which contains a very simple example that brings to light some of the main ideas and tools used in the thesis. In fact, almost every time I've given a talk on this work, my first few minutes are spent on exactly this example. The example is an elementary one from basic probability, so you don't need a lot of background to understand it. But it shines the spotlight on what is probably the key idea from which the rest of the math follows. And let me just tell you, that idea is essentially a passage from classical probability theory to quantum probability theory. It's a passage from a probability distribution on a finite set to the quantum version of that. A passage from marginalizing probabilities to the quantum version of that. Now, this passage is essentially just a passage from sets to vector spaces or a passage to linear algebra. So that's what you'll find in the rest of chapter two, where I describe the quantum analogs of basic tools from probability theory. Now, just know that these tools can be found in most any introduction to quantum information theory or to quantum computing, but I've included what I like to think of as expositional treats that you may not find in most introductions to the subject. Importantly, I do not assume the reader has a background in physics, and so the exposition and examples are all anchored in the world of mathematics. All right, let's move on. It turns out that when you make this passage from classical to quantum probability in a particular way, then you discover a certain paradigm which plays a key role in the thesis. Here's the paradigm. Suppose you have some large composite system. Then you can reconstruct the state of that large system if you know the states of smaller systems that comprise it together with knowledge about how those subsystems interact. So that's the content of chapter three. 
I describe this very special passage from classical to quantum probability. I give a decryption of some of the mathematics you find there and then discuss this reconstruction idea. Now here's a part I really like. This ability to reconstruct a quantum state given knowledge of smaller subsystems suggests a new algorithm for reconstructing a joint probability distribution on a data set, for example, namely by piecing together smaller parts of it in a highly principled way that knows something about how those smaller pieces interact. And so we do this. This is chapter four. There I describe an algorithm together with an experiment that tests it. Something called tensor networks play a big role here, and you'll be able to follow along with the introduction that I give in the preliminaries in chapter two. So you can think of this chapter as an application to machine learning or to data science if you like. So there's some mathematical theory, and then there's an application with an experiment that shows the theory in action. But, and this is the last thing, there are a couple of other applications which I like to think of as applications in mathematics. And one of those applications is in category theory. All right, I know what you're thinking. What does any of this have to do with category theory? Well, so far, the discussion has been about probabilities. But here's a question. What if you replace probabilities with possibilities? That is, instead of asking, what is the probability that orange and fruit go together? You can ask, can orange and fruit go together? Yes or no? When you do this, and when you look back at the theory in chapters two through four with a bird's eye view, it is very evident that parts of the linear algebra are amazingly similar to something called formal concept analysis, which is a mathematical framework that uses lattice theory to identify concepts and concept hierarchies and data. Now, whenever you see two constructions that look very similar in different areas of mathematics, it is highly possible that category theory has a lot to say about it. And indeed, category theory does have a lot to say about this. It turns out that there are several interesting free forgetful adjunctions behind the scenes, which gives a remarkable dictionary between linear algebra and category theory. So formal concepts are introduced in chapter one of the thesis and later revisited from the perspective of category theory and linear algebra in chapter five. So that's one application of my thesis to mathematics. But let me close with another one. The final application brings us back to this idea of marrying algebra and statistics. It turns out that in certain contexts, our passage from classical to quantum probability gives a way to let statistics serve as a proxy for meaning. Think back to language for a minute. To understand the meaning of the word orange, it's helpful to know something about how that word fits into the language. We noted earlier that orange idea is not a meaningful expression in English, although orange fruit is. So the meaning of orange is somehow built into the network of ways that orange fits into other expressions. This is not unlike the Yoneda lemma in category theory, which says that any mathematical object is completely determined by the network of relationships that object has with other objects in its environment. And this is the same perspective we take here. And this is like the algebra part of the story, but it's not the whole story. There's also statistics. In other words, it's not enough to know that orange can go with fruit or chrysanthemum or safety vest, but there's additional information, namely the statistics of these expressions. Again, the probability for saying I have an orange idea is much smaller than that for orange fruit. So what you'd like to do is to decorate this network with something like conditional probabilities. Now, this is more than just intuition. Basic tools in quantum probability provide a natural framework for capturing this very idea. The mathematics gives a principled way to see that orange unravels as the totality or network of all expressions containing orange, but it's a weighted or decorated unraveling where the network is enriched over these kinds of conditional probabilities. And that's what you'll find in section 3.4. Amazingly, the way in which algebra and statistics meet in this setting is not incompatible with the categorical perspectives of chapter five. And you can read more about this in an upcoming paper or two, which is part of an ongoing and promising investigation into this mathematical structure. All right, that's a brief introduction to my thesis. It's now in the archive. You can also find more information on my website, Mathema, where I have lots of friendly articles on mathematics, in particular, some of the math you'll find in my paper. Now I'd like to close by saying that this work comes from many conversations with a number of extraordinary mathematicians and physicists at Tunnel, which is a research startup in New York City. 
I'm really grateful to them and to Friends of Tunnel for their generosity in discussing with me what I think is remarkably vibrant mathematics. All right, that's it for this video. I've really enjoyed thinking about these ideas and I hope you will too.